Hey, this is uh, Robert Downey Jr. Hey, uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing here. I think I'm supposed to be talking about a podcast thing. Is that what this is? All right. Um, hey, you should uh, really support podcasts that are done by people independently instead of like these big corporations and companies like the one that made this movie that you all know me from which I was fantastic in absolutely ripped and buff and I got to kiss uh, what, what's her face the former Coldplay girl we had a great time Gwyneth Paltrow thank you Pepper Potts Pepper Potts is her name anyway yeah so you should support the independent podcast because by golly those people do a lot of hard work to make them and I'm not on drugs anymore and that's an important thing to remember. Remember that iTunes and Stitcher and all those places, they show podcasts only by people that pay for them, and that's not exactly cool. So what you should do right now is listen to Mike's Daily Podcast. In fact, it's going to start right now. Thank you. I will never, ever age. This show is clean, pretty much. Uh, 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 Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 828. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. Today, it is the finale of my intimate interview with the Austin band, T-Bird and the Breaks. Plus, we hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player, the brewmaster, and Google wants to build more stuff in Silicon Valley. Thanks, Google. Silicon Valley needs it. It's so sparse. Mike's Daily Podcast. And Basil the Boxer and I were we were gonna go for a walk and then the rains came down, but that's okay because our earth is parched. Mike's Daily Podcast. Here in the Bay Area. I think that Thor was a surfer dude, Norse god, and Bjork is an interesting singing Norse broad. No, wait a minute. She's not from Norway, she's from Iceland. And she sings like this. She has a new album. But when she sings, I think of Kristen Wiig, who does a great impression of her. Mike's Daily Podcast. I am Bjork. Okay, that's about as good as I can get it. You know, Mike's I know I do a lot of daily self-deprecation, podcast. self-deprecating humor on the show. Yeah. And uh, this guy I know, Aaron Fonseca. He tells me, you know, why do you do that? That's like when you're trying to get a woman to date you and you tell her how awful you are. Why would she want to date you then? That you should be more positive about things. And, you know, maybe he's right. Look who's just walking in now. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How you all doing? And it's a disgruntled fiddle player tell you what. What? It sure is raining right now. Yeah, I literally was taking Basil out just a few minutes ago. We were going to go for a little bit of walk before I uh, did my podcast. And all of a sudden, the, the cloud, and I see this big black cloud over me, but I'm thinking that's not going to do anything. It's California, maybe a little sprinkle. We go maybe just a few feet down the street, and bam, it's coming down in these big, thick water droplets. And so we go running back, and here I am. With a slightly wet back. Mark, isn't that a... Don't bring that up. Look who else just walked in. Oh, Mark, I make the root beer. I'm the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Brewmaster, what root beer did you make today? In honor of the fact that you like Bjork, I made delicious root Bjork beer. Oh, boy. All right, let me try some of this. Mm. Oh, man. Did you put some of that really strong Icelandic... Liquor in there? I might have. Wow. How do you know about Icelandic culture? Because Bjork and I are dating. What the? What? You know, she is recently divorced. That's shocking. That's almost as shocking as hearing that Floyd the Floor Man enjoys the album from the 80s by Yaz called uh, Upstairs at Eric's. Really? It's as exciting as that? As exciting, as surprising as, as being surprised by a bunch of rain droplets falling out of the sky. Wow, Mike, you get surprised by little things. Maybe. But I'm drunk now because of that Icelandic booze you put in that Root Bjork beer. Give me a couple minutes, maybe I'll sober up. Later that day. I'm sober now, but now I have a taste of a 
dead monkey in my mouth, which is not a very good taste to have Morse code. Hey, uh, Flash, speaking of, well, apes and, and simians and such, they had that, uh, what's that, Gorilla Grog in there that's like a famous uh, gorilla from the comic books. But superhero TV shows, in that same show, that was The Flash that I saw that on, and they also had on The Flash Morse code. They were using Morse code to, to transmit uh, some kind of message between this guy and his uh, split uh, persona, brain, something like that, and they're talking to each other. Okay, yeah, it's science fiction But it, there was another show I was watching, Agent Carter, that did the exact same thing. They were using Morse code. And I'm like, Morse code's all over the place. Like every superhero movie has the main guy with his shirt off at some point. But it's also Spielberg used a lot of Morse code in his recent movies. Super 8, The Adventures of Tintin, and Lincoln. So yeah, there's something going on with Morse code. All those dots and dashes. It's so reassuring in our binary world. And, you know, people break things down to dots and dashes like they break things down to white and gold or blue and black and that's how I see it in my blue and black world Um, but speaking of binary Silicon Valley Google has decided to submit plans for a vastly expanded headquarters in Silicon Valley they did this yesterday They are based there, of course, and it's presenting a bucolic vision of movable structures to be built under curving and translucent canopies, according to Reuters. The submission of the plan to the city council in Mountain View, California, where the company has its headquarters and has been there for 15 years. It marks the first step in a very long review process. The new headquarters would give the internet company the room for an additional 10,000 employees compared to the 20,000 Google staffers that currently work in the city. The Google's blueprint for new headquarters in the city's North Bayshore district has gathered widespread attention because the design is seen as architecturally innovative. In the San Francisco Bay Area, the plan is also closely being watched due to concerns the technology industry's high salaries are pushing housing prices beyond levels affordable to most families. Stop that, Google. The design by architect Bjark Ingalls of the firm Bjark Ingalls Group and Thomas Heatherwick of architecture and design company Heatherwick Studio calls for block-like structures that Google says could be moved around to create space for teams to pursue different projects. It would add about 2.5 million square feet of space to the existing campus. Hmm, I wonder if that's also more earthquake safe or less earthquake safe if it's movable and there's an earthquake would it move too much or maybe that's good because it could move with the earth moving Mark I feel the earth move under my feet I feel the sky tumbling down and that Carol King is gonna do my hair I gotta go bye I'll bye I love Carol King's hair she does have amazing hair Vast, clear canopies over the buildings would allow light to filter into the futuristic campus, and there would be places for trees, grass, and bicycle paths, all of it nestled into different parts of the campus. The proposal by Google, which is the city's leading source of property taxes, would contribute to more local prosperity, but also increased traffic, according to one Mountain View city councilman. In 2013, Cupertino... Uh, Close to Mountain View approved Apple Inc.'s plan for a spaceship-like campus, which is under construction right now. Yes, I remember uh, when Steve Jobs was still alive, he was talking about that. So, what do you think about that huge Google creation, Google sprawl? Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section, emails from email. Have you heard the new Bjork album? Do you like it or, or are you repulsed? Why does she sing like that? Oh, because she's from Iceland. Oh my God, Mac, it's like she's right here. Yeah. <laughs> Basil doesn't like it when I sing like her. Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com too. What you think of the whole thing with Morse code popping up everywhere and uh, guys' shirts popping off. 
in superhero movies and self-deprecating humor. Do you enjoy it or do you think it's stupid like the show? See what I did there? It was a self-deprecating humor. No. Basil doesn't agree with that either. And you can email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show. And there's the website, mikesdailypodcast.com. We are on iTunes. There's a link to where to find us on iTunes. And you can subscribe to us there, comment on the show, and rate the show. And that helps our ranking and more people find out about us. As Robert Downey Jr. was saying at the beginning of the show, there's just so much clutter to get through to find podcasts that are done independently by people that are not part of huge organizations. And it's neat to hear independent podcasts. I enjoy listening to them. So seek out those independent podcasts. And if you comment on their shows and rate their shows on iTunes, they actually get seen by more people then. We are also on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, and the TuneIn Radio app, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, and Spreaker, and links to all of those there at mikesdailypodcast.com. And tell your friends about us through Facebook. Like the Facebook page, and when I post a new show, share it with your friends and more people find out about us. And follow us on Twitter, and when I tweet the new show you can retweet that to your friends and more people find out about us that way too we're also on instagram yelp and tumblr and links to all of those at mikesdailypodcast.com as well as the amazon link if you're going to buy anything on amazon go through that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy and if you do that that helps out our show the blog the daily podcast picture and all my past interviews too are at mikesdailypodcast.com and speaking of interviews into an interview I'm speaking with T-Bird and the Breaks. It's T-Bird I'm speaking to, and your name is Tim Crane. How did it morph into T-Bird? Well, I mean, I guess I've had a number of nicknames in my life, uh, but T-Bone was already cooking. I got a friend called, a friend named T-Bone, and, uh, you know, my last name is, you know, a bird, so it ah, kind of makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense, yeah. 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 Because there are a lot of T bones. There's like T bone Burnett and and yeah, that Yeah. But, yeah, so it's a little it's a little different, you know what I mean? Sounds good, yeah. It's a good it's a and it and it plays on your real name. And T Bird and the Breaks is a great name for a band. And the Breaks, how did that part come about? That's like kind of a tip of the hat to uh to um hip hop, you know, some classic hip hop records are they're built upon the part of a funk record, most of the time a funk record, where it breaks down to the to just the drums, you know what I mean? You know, those drums get sampled uh, and they build upon that and, you know, to make a hip-hop jam. Uh, you know, and that's we're into all aspects of that, you know what I mean? We're into the original funk record, we're into the classic hip hop joint that came out of it we're into you know so that's it's kind of a tip of the hat to, ah. to that somebody is going to uh, sample your drum breaks at some point yeah I, I hope so I, I have a feeling and and then uh, you, your tour you've you've traveled quite a bit of the US any good food that you've had on the tour that uh, sticks out in your memory. Yeah, yeah, we had some uh, delicious seafood in Seattle. That was good. Let's see where else have we? I'm looking to get some. Uh, I'd like to get some Asian food in the Bay Area. Maybe you can point me in the right direction. Uh, <laughs> I mean, we we always try and get adventurous on the road. We spent a lot of time in the. Southeast as well, so we you know get, we get our health dose of barbecue and all that. But uh, for yeah, right now I'm in the market for some Asian food. Oh yeah, definitely in Oakland. There's all kinds. I will um, do some research and let you know. I'll, Thanks, but I appreciate that. I will check my Yelp, and uh, may, maybe I'll just call up a bunch of people that I know they can help me <laughs> out too. Yeah, there we go. And the first song that I discovered you guys with was Spread the Love. Hmm. And, and it sounds so early 70s funk. And I, I thought yeah. I thought I was listening to like Leon Russell or Dr. John or something. And Ah uh, yeah, big Dr. John fan. How did you come how did this song come about? Um 
it, uh, you know, the, I, I guess to some degree the same way that they all do. I'll have a little uh, riff or groove. In this case, it was the uh, bass line that bed and do better, better and bed and do better and better. That, that you know, just pops into my head. That's the way I write. Something pops into my head. I'm like, oh, cool. I, I could rock with that. And then I just build upon it. And you know, little. Sometimes there's a story, and sometimes it's just it's wordplay, and it's fun. And this one kind of started with just like some wordplay, and then the message of it is kind of like you know in a broader way the, the message of the band is there was going to be one you know that's what we do out here on the road we're trying to survive but we're also spreading the love yeah awesome well let's play it right now spread the love it is t-bird and the breaks and find out more about him at t-bird and the breaks.com and thanks for being on mike's daily podcast hey man thank you very much for having me appreciate it Spread the love, T-Bird and the Breaks, as we go outside of the last place on Earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast, somewhere in Podcaster Valley, California. And here's today's podcast picture. The picture is in Alameda, they decommissioned a whole bunch of the naval air base that they had out there. And now they've got like a cool vodka factory out there you can go on tours of hangar ones out there there's a new beer brewery called faction brewery out there and a winery and and uh uss hornet you can go on tours of it's fascinating beautiful place and i was walking basil out there and i saw you can see san francisco from 
this edge of Alameda Island. So I posted that picture. Mark, that's a great picture. I can't wait to see it at MarksDailyPodcast.com. Thanks, Vanita. Your hair is beautiful. Thanks. Carol King just did it. Y'all, I like to jog around Alameda all the time. I do it because I gained a little bit of weight over last year because I was in a little bit of depression. Oh, no. You were depressed? Yeah, because I realized that I'm not a spring chicken anymore. Uh Uh-huh. And, like, I realized that I then had to put on a couple pounds because I was not running, and so it just added on to me. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, I'm having a great day because I saw Carol King. Great. Next show, we're going to bring you a much-loved feature called News Random. It'll be the return of that segment where we'll find some interesting news stories. And we will also hear from Anna Rutabaga, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Benita, you don't look overweight, and you are still very young and vivacious. Thanks, Mac. I was waiting for that. I know you were. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Basil, the show's over, so let's go for a walk, and it'll be pouring down rain, and you're going to get a shower in the process. I know it is a win-win.